First, I'd like to say a special thanks to Banggood for sending me this M5 Stack Extensible module to take a look. If you're interested in getting one of these after watching this video, please be sure to use the links provided in the description below. My understanding is that they do use this statistics to help them gauge the viewer engagement on a specific YouTube channel. And by using these links, it would also help me to get more stuff to review for you guys from Banggood in the future. Anyway, for those who are into microcontrollers, you probably have used or at least have heard of uh, the ESP32 microcontroller before. I personally have not used it just because I already have many microcontrollers to choose from and I have many Arduino boards lying around. Nevertheless, the ESP32 microcontroller is very versatile. Very importantly, it has both wired and wireless networking capabilities through its built-in Ethernet, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth support. As a microcontroller, it is also very powerful. It has built-in 12-bit ADCs and 8-bit DACs, and has capacitive touch-sensing capable GPIOs. ESP32 supports pretty much all commonly used protocols such as SPI, I2C, UART, CAN, you name it, it has it. And the best of all, the ESP32 based microcontroller boards can be had for as low as under $5, which makes it a great starting point for people wading into microcontroller and IoT stuff. And because I have not used M5 stack before, let's take a look together and see if I could figure out how to get started. Now, this M5 stack module comes in at $36, which is definitely not cheap. There are also many accessories you can add on to this module, so it could become rather pricey if you want a lot of modules in addition to the base kit. However, at $36 for the base, it does come with an LCD and speaker and everything is enclosed in a very high quality case. This means that you can use it as your final product without having to worry about uh, putting everything together neatly in a case after your project is done, especially if you use the M5 stack compatible module plugins. So depending on what you do with it, it could be very well worth the price tag. Anyway, enough uh, rambling, let's take a look at uh, what we've got. So the whole M5 stack kit comes in this nice plastic box and uh, we have a USB-C cable, although it's very short, but uh, it serves a purpose. And you use it to either charge the unit or use it to transfer data or program the module. And then we have some uh, DuPont headers for you to hook up to your external uh, boards or sensors like that. And then we have the main unit here. So the main unit, it's actually the Wow, it looks very nice. It's, uh, you know, the, the finish is very nice and uh, it does feel like pretty sturdy. Um, and the plastic is a high quality-ish feeling. It's not like those things that, that are shiny and cracky when you press on it. This is really sturdy. So I think it uh, looks very good, especially if you were finishing your project and want a nice case to it. And you don't need to do that because this one already provides it and everything is integrated in here. And uh, best of all is that uh, uh, they have many plug-in modules, sort of like your Arduino, you can plug in the shields. This one you can expand it by plugging in different uh, types of boards. And so let's uh, open it up and uh, take a look at uh, what is inside here. And uh, for that, I'm going to, I'm going to pry it open, wide this and uh, opens up and the other end is a little tight here so I don't know let's uh, open it up here okay ah, so because this side has the uh, headers and that's when you insert headers in that's how this whole thing get made it together so this is actually not as ideal as you saw a little earlier it does seem like the other end is a little loose so ideally if they put uh, some other headers on this end or a little clip on this end, it would make it so much more sturdy, especially when you have multiple modules stacking up. And uh, that would make it uh, um, a lot more secure. But that said, that's probably good enough if you uh, don't open it up that uh, often. So this whole unit, um, as you see here, we 
have uh, everything nicely laid out and uh, this is your ESP32 module and uh, we have a bunch of other chips right now I can't see what they are but since the whole thing we have the schematics and uh, we can presumably uh, take a look later so I did have uh, the schematics printed out uh, I just haven't looked at it in details yet but some of those are uh, I can see already are the uh, power supplies and uh, some of the main chips. Anyway, so for those who are interested, you can take a look. So back to the, the main board here, and we also have this uh, uh, USB-C header, which, uh, not header, USB-C plug, which is what we, uh, the supplied cable is for. And we have a microcontroller, uh, sorry, micro SD card slot. And uh, so I do have a micro SD slot here, a uh, micro SD card here. So let's take a look at uh, um, putting it in. Now, if you look at this, I'm not sure if you can see it clearly, but uh, the SD card opening is actually towards the very bottom of the slot. So, and the slot seems to be a little bit of, uh, very, very wide and uh, thick rather, the slot opening. So if I put this in, if it's not careful enough, you can see that it slides right into the case without uh, uh, getting to the uh, actual uh, micro SD slot. So this one, uh, you know, the design probably can be a little better by either making this uh, slightly smaller uh, the opening or making uh, the board a little higher so that it actually smack right in the middle. But uh, that's just a, a minor issue. So now you, if you are careful, you just uh, uh, put that towards the uh, bottom and push it and it will be in. Actually, I prefer this uh, kind of uh, SD card holder much better than the, the ones found on the uh, Raspberry Pi ones because now this one, you know, you you can feel whether or not it's pushed in and uh, or it is disengaged. So that's quite nice. So let, let's leave that in and we might uh, test it out when we power this on. And, uh, and also we have a, um, this looks like is a power uh, supply header uh, where you, I, can, I think you can plug in your external power. Now, I do believe this unit comes with a uh, built-in battery. I haven't uh, seen where the battery is yet, so I don't think it's on this side of the board because the other end is, uh, is an LCD and um, there doesn't seem to be enough uh, space for it. So probably um, the battery would have to be under this board, I'm guessing here. So let me open this up and uh, take a look. And uh, the design of the board is actually very attractive, I have to say. So now all the four screws are removed and the board comes right out. Yep. So now you can see that we do have a battery uh, stuck underneath. This battery is very, very tiny. Uh, I'm not sure in terms of the uh, capacity here, but uh, certainly it won't be able to power your unit on for a pretty uh, long period of time. And if that's the case, if you do need to have it on all the time, you probably do need a external battery pack or a um, battery stuck in that header. And uh, these are these magnets? Oh geez, these are magnets. Okay, so Wow, they're quite loose. I think the reason for them to have the magnet is so that you can um, put this on a refrigerator when you're done, let's say, for and or some something has a metal surface. And I do wish they uh, actually glue these magnets down so that uh, they don't fly loose like what we just saw happening. But, oh, but... Uh, that said, it shouldn't be a problem because uh, normally people probably wouldn't be disassembled this anyway. So let's uh, put this back and uh, let's, uh, after we put this back, I'm going to uh, attempt to power it on 
to see what we've got. Let's see if we can get... Okay, so it seems right. Let's put this back. I have to say the construction looks really uh, high quality and uh, certainly it's not like a, a cheap piece of a kit. After all, this kit costs uh, $36. And, uh, but when you think about it, you have um, multiple boards here and you do have the whole supporting circuitry besides the, uh, uh, the ESP32 itself. And uh, you have an LCD and a nice case. So I assume that, uh, you know, it uh, certainly worth the money if uh, you are utilizing the entire thing. So let me put this back, put this back, okay, so that, uh, hang on, doesn't want to co cooperate because we have a magnet here, so it's uh, not uh, going incorrectly here. Okay, so now we have uh, put it back and uh, let me reattach this and uh, see how it works. Again, uh, I think you see, uh, I, I think I talked about this uh, uh, many times now, so you can see that the problem here is this end uh, doesn't want to stay in place because the headers are on this end. So it would be really nice if they are include a clip of some kind so that uh, this side would be securely uh, closed when you close those two parts together. But anyway, so let's uh, see if we can power it on. So there's a button on the left, so let's do that. No. Press and hold. No. I wonder if it's because um, this one was shipped and now the battery has drained. I don't know, but certainly this one now doesn't uh, do anything here. So let me bring a battery pack and uh, we'll, we'll test it. Okay, so now I brought over a battery pack and uh, let me plug this in and turn the battery power bank on and plug in, plug it in. Sure enough, now it's uh, booted and I assume this is some factory uh, default uh, program. And uh, I'm not sure how well you can see this. Actually, it's uh, quite impressive. The little screen is really clear. So I can see the screen very well from uh, where I am sitting. And it looks very crisp. So I think we can click on the button. Yes, it will show us which button you clicked. So that's the default firmware. And um, besides that, there's nothing to it. I did see that during its boot up, it scans the network and it did find my uh, uh, the content on the uh, SD card. I'm not sure you can see that. So that's just some of the, uh, the demonstrative um, uh, program running. And um, what I wanted to do now is I think I want to hop over to the computer side to download the uh, program and uh, to see if we can get uh, something other than this uh, demo program running. I forgot to mention that uh, uh, this uh, kit also comes with a nice uh, getting quick start guide and some stickers. I assume that you, when you have multiple of these, you want to make sure that you know which one you are talking to. And, uh, but anyway, so it does come with this uh, quick start guide. So we will use this guide to uh, get uh, started. And uh, so also we have this nice uh, diagram of how, where everything is. Very, very nice. So let's hop over to the computer and uh, get started. So now we are on M5 Stacks website and we can click on get started and uh, uh, go from there. So because we're right now running under Linux, we don't need any of the uh, Windows uh, driver stuff. We can go directly to instructions for Linux. Now, just a couple of days ago, I actually 
uh, just did a brand new installation of my system to the latest Ubuntu 18.04 uh, release. So actually this is to our advantage because right now besides the Arduino environment I don't have anything else on this machine yet. So that is good and uh, we can just uh, start following the instructions and uh, see if we, we can get this to work. So now the first thing is uh, uh, installing the Arduino IDE which we did and the second one is uh, executing the following command uh, using the, uh, the, uh, the terminal here. So the only thing I need to change here is the installation directory because if you look at this I am uh, my Arduino installation is under 1.8.5 uh, whereas the default install is under Arduino. So I prepared this uh, document basically just by changing the directory to the 1.85. So let's give this a go. And um, it should go ra relatively quickly. So when this is done, let me just first uh, close my Arduino IDE. And after this is done, supposedly we will have the M5 stack available in our Arduino IDE. So when that is uh, uh, doing that, let's uh, first see right now in our Arduino board we don't have the MP uh, sorry the M5 uh, stack yet. Okay, so let's take a look at that. We don't have it, that yet. So let me close it up, and uh, when this is done, we will we should uh, see that in our selection. Okay, so now we're done, and uh, let me start the Arduino IDE again, and let me move that into view here. Let's uh, see if we get our board here. So indeed, now if you look at the actual, uh, sorry, boards, we now have uh, ESP32, and uh, do I have, yeah, we have more here. I have M5 stack core ESP32. So I assume that's the one we're going to be using. Uh, so let's select that. And uh, according to the menu, we also need to uh, get the Arduino library updated. So let's uh, go to where the installation is Arduino libraries. And we wanted to copy this line here. So now we should uh, have everything that we need to fire up the, uh, to, to have run the example from M5 stack. So let's take a look. So let me launch the Arduino board, uh, sorry, the Arduino IDE. And on the board side, we should have, let's see here, board, where are we? Oh yeah, so I already selected this as a uh, M5 stack core ESP32. So, and if we drill down, we can see there are many of the boards available. Now, unfortunately, the screencast, I think it cuts off uh, right after here, so you don't see that M5 stack, but it's right underneath there. So now let's see if we can find an example here. We can go to examples, and uh, do we see any M5 MP M5 stack, yep. So let's do the basic. And uh, we want to do a hello. Let's see what we, let's do display here. So this one basically uh, initializes the display and uh, draw some uh, shapes on it. So let's uh, get it started and uh, see if we can get that to work. And uh, as you can see here, I have my uh, MP stack 
M5 stack. I kept saying MP stack, I don't know why. So let me connect to the USB. And if we can copy that in. Okay, so now it initializes. And uh, let's see if we can compile this. So now it's getting compiled. And it does take some time. And now when it's done done compiling, let's see if we can upload this. Uh, an error occurred, so let's see what the error is. Not sure what this is. No such file or directory. Ah, COM port 1. So I suspect we need to select a port here. Uh, so the port, I think it's a TTY USB 0. So let's just uh, try that. Let's try it again. No, something's still wrong here. So now it's a uh, permission denied the TTY uh, USB 0. So let me uh, pause a moment to see what's going on with that permission issue. So as it turned out, I, after I did some research, I totally forgot that uh, I needed to grant permission to the, po uh, f to the port uh, to the uh, Arduino program. So I think what, how I did it in my previous uh, install was uh, to add a couple of files in the rules directory here. So for this one, and, and you can see that we have an Arduino, uh, the rules, basically what we're doing here. Let me just uh, show you that. So really is to just to give permission to the, uh, the specific USB uh, device and based on the model number and product ID. And uh, I just inserted the, I mean, just plugged in the, um, what do you call that, the MP, uh, M5 stack in and also added the rules for that. So let's just take a look here. And uh, th that's the rule. So now I haven't tried it yet. I don't know if it would work. So anyway, so now let's, um, uh, let's uh, reopen an example here for the M5 uh, stack. See if we can see that. And uh, I think first we need to select the board again. Yeah, so right now we're, for some reason it doesn't remember the board here. So let me select M5 stack. Okay, so now let's come back here to the examples and uh, M5 stack. Let's do basic. Uh, let's just do say hello world. This time let's just keep it simple here. So now let me uh, start recording on the other camera so you can see what is going on. Hopefully we can uh, have both captured here. Okay, so now let me first compile this. And it does take some time to compile because uh, the library is much bigger than your standard Arduino library, and there are a lot of uh, uh, source files need to be compiled. And uh, so let's uh, upload it. Fingers crossed. And uh, it did upload our set reset pin. And let's see what we, ah, yes, we have this hello world displayed and it's quite tiny. So let's try something else here. So let's uh, uh, have another example here. Example, let's do M5 stack. Let's do advanced here. Uh, display, let's see, uh, let's do the free font demo. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing here, but uh, we just opened a random one. So this one appears to be uh, setting some fonts here. 
Okay, so let's see if we can compile this. And this compiling, again, it will take some time. So by the look of the library, it looks pretty straightforward. So I assume that uh, you know people who are familiar with Arduino can uh, do this without any problem. So let's uh, upload this. And uh, it's uploading. So let's concentrate on the, uh, ah, actually it's quite, uh, it's quite speedy the upload. So now everything's working on this again. So let's see if we have no, these buttons are not working. Should we try one more? Let's uh, try something more here. Let's do M5 stack games. How about games? Tetris. Ooh, that's awesome. So let's see if we can get this working. Just see. Okay, so there's a. It seems I'm not sure if it's responding to my button click or it's just uh, no, it's just looping. Okay, so now the uh, the Tetris here is uh, compiled and we're gonna upload it. So it looks pretty, pretty good. Let's uh, see if we can start this. Uh, yep. It's uh, pretty good. Anyway, so it looks like it's working uh, correctly. It doesn't have a down button, but uh, you got a point here. So it looks like everything is working. And after, you know, we did hit a couple of uh, uh, snacks here and there, uh, that's because of the environment setup. But once we set it up, everything seems to be working correctly. So I think what I'm going to do next is, uh, uh, well, if you guys have any suggestions on what I should do with this uh, module and uh, leave a comment and let me know. But uh, I'm pretty sure that I would be able to uh, use this in a lot of my coming projects. So again, if you're interested, uh, follow the links I included in the caption below and uh, visit Banggood, Banggood who supplied this uh, unit to me and uh, uh, check out uh, their offerings. And I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. And if you liked the video, please give it a big thumbs up. Remember to subscribe and share and I will catch up with you next time.